My name is Slapsy Maxy Rosenblum. I've got a secret. Well, uh, do you think you can guess what it is? From the new self-neutralizing home permanent, which has been awarded the Good Housekeeping Seal, and White Rain, the wonderful new lotion shampoo that leaves your hair sunshine bright, present I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you very much. That was nice. I'll do the same for you sometime. And anyhow, greetings again to you out there, my friends. It's real nice to have you back on another session of I've Got a Secret, a Snoopy sort of a program in which we reveal the awful truth about some very nice people just for fun. Tonight, we have some interesting folk and some information about their private lives that they're going to try to keep secret from our panel. Now, I'd like to have you meet the members of our panel. First, one of the best-dressed men on our panel, Mr. Bill Cullen. Then the lovely lady who, in a recent picture, played the part of David's other Bathsheba. This is Miss Jane Meadows. And the distinguished author of many books which he hasn't bothered to write yet, Mr. Henry Morgan. And the owner and operator of Mr. Moss Hart, Miss Kitty Carlisle. That is our panel. <laughs> now, in just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman with tonight's first... Now it's time for the large game of I've Got a Secret. How about you, panel? You all sent? Oh, More or less ready so. to go? Oh, then let's get the course. first gentleman in here, our first guest of the evening. Good evening, sir. <laughs> now, will you tell our panel over yonder what your name is, sir, and what you do for a living? Well, my name is John Bartlett. I'm a college professor at Rutgers University. A college professor. All right, now here's how we play the game, uh, panel. You remember how we go. Each panelist will get two questioning periods of 15 seconds each but the clock will only time the actual questions. That is to say, we take time out for discussion and audience reaction, if any. When the panelist's time is up, he will hear this sound, and I will pay our guest $10 and turn the game over to the next questioner. Twice around the panel for a total loss of $80, and the game is lost. Now then, Mr. Bartlett, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we will reveal it at the same time to the folks at home. <laughs> You ever play with the Yanks? <laughs> <laughs> to help classify this secret panel, I will tell you that it concerns something that he was. And I think this evening we'll start our questioning with Miss Kitty Carlisle, please. Mr. Bartley, this thing that you were, were you this more than once? Yes. Were you proud to be this? Yes. Did this involve some kind of uh, an award, a medal, a title of some kind? Title? Title, yes. yes. Uh, is it possible that you did something perhaps faster than anyone else? <laughs> did this then involve the use of your feet? <laughs> Was there mental uh, goings-on involved in it? Yes. Uh, there was mental and physical. Uh, did you use an object to achieve this thing that you were? <laughs> <laughs> yes. There, Miss Carlisle, is $10 down and $70 to go. Mr. Bill Cullen, please. This uh, object you used, did you throw it or hit it with a bat or something like that? <laughs> no. Does uh, this object, uh, Mr. Bartlett, have anything uh, to do with sports? <laughs> no. Well, you said you were a professor. I, I, I had lost sight of that. Uh, if you're a professor, is there a science connected with what you did in any way? <laughs> There's a certain amount of, yeah, there's a certain science to it, I understand. Well, I want to get back to this object again. Uh, the object that was used here, would you say it was as big as a, I don't know, an X-ray machine? Yes. Does it have uh, a lot of dials and knobs? And... <laughs> no. No, it has no, no dials or knobs. If someone unfamiliar with science or unfamiliar with your phase of science were to try to, uh, to accomplish the same thing, would this object be likely to blow up? No. No, it would not. No. Does my doctor have an object like this or an object like this in his office or anything? No. I don't know your doctor, Mr. Cullen, but I think the answer must be no. $20 down and $60 to go, Miss Jane Meadows. Mr. Bartlett, would it help me to know what age you were when you were this? No. It wouldn't. 
Did this, uh, does this thing that you were by any chance express a relationship to another human being? <laughs> mm, I would say that there is... Indirectly. A, indirectly. Indirectly, but it's not mentioned in the secret? No. Would it help me to go after anything about this human being? No. It wouldn't. The object is the important thing, is it? That's right. To go after the object. Would the object be a vehicle by any chance? No. It wouldn't? No. But it's as large, if not larger, than an X-ray machine. That's right. Is it larger? Yes. Well, it's not a vehicle. Is it, a, is it an electrical thing, by any chance? <laughs> no. There's $30 down and $50 to go, Mr. Henry Morgan, please. This, uh, this object that you're using, Professor, would it help me to know what you're a professor of now, to know what your relationship was to that object? Yes. Oh, ho. Are you a professor of, uh, <laughs> in the uh, arts? No. In the sciences? That's right. In the physical sciences? You don't know what that is. I don't mean. even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm awfully glad you don't because I wouldn't know what to answer. <laughs> well, uh, do you deal with uh, what we used to call in high school physics? No. <laughs> well, very small high school. Like. <laughs> this object of yours, it wouldn't be a building. No. It wouldn't. No. Is it movable? Yes. Does it have the wheels? No. It has no wheels, Mr. Morgan. $40 down and $40 to go. This is the panel's last time around. Miss Carlyle? Um, are you a scientist? Yes. A, a sort of a doctor? Like a physical doctor? Do you invent something? No. I think that I must, m must uh, poke my nose in here just long enough to say that when you say, is he a scientist, uh, I think the, the, the sense of her question is, is you know, physics and n nuclear That's things. Right. Then That's the answer right. then would have to be no. 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 Does this thing that you ha worked with, does this involve human beings? This thing that you were? Yes. Does it involve women? Sometimes. And men too? That's right. Um, did you do anything with these people? Is that part of the secret? Uh, the other human beings involved in this secret are not mentioned. They are only implied. They're incidental. That's right. That's right. Uh, do they have, they have no direct bearing on what you did. Have they no have no direct bearing on what you did. <laughs> You'll have to yell louder than the horn. <laughs> Look, uh, yeah. Yes, they have a direct, well, a direct bearing, but not for your purposes. Let me put it that way. $50 down and $30 to go, Mr. Bill Cullen. I'm looking for something that you were, is that right? That's right. Uh, that's, that's the secret, something he was. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I know is an object involved, and the only thing we know about the object that's as big as an x-ray machine. And it moves and has no wheels. How big is an x-ray machine? <laughs> <laughs> this object, is, is there a relation to people, as far as what you did, to other people beside yourself? Yeah, no, we said only, only very indi only in indirectly. Indirectly. In, an indirect relation to people. Uh, were you, this object, did you do something to this object, something that no one else had done? Panel, I think we're getting so far afield, I'm going to throw the sponge completely in his defeat. Bell. Pardon? Let's make some wild ones. Like a diving bell? Like a diving bell? No. Anybody no, else no. got a wild Airplane? guess? Airplane? No. no. Swell. He I... is the head of the School of Agriculture at Rutgers, Mr. Bartlett is, and was a champion cow milker. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for making it. <laughs> now, may we have our next contestant, please? Now, would you tell us your name, please, sir, and where you are from? Uh, my name is Robert Shank. I'm from uh, Locust Hill, Persephone, New Jersey. All right, well, now, Mr. Shank, you know how we play twice around the panel, and the game is lost. You tell me what your secret is, the folks out there will see it written on their screens. That is awfully nice work if you can get it to do. <laughs> to help classify this secret, I will tell you, a panel, that it concerns his situation in life. And we will start with Miss Jane Meadows, please. Your situation in life? That tells is you it me. a pleasant situation? Oh, definitely. It is. Uh, does this situation in life have anything to do with your occupation? No. It doesn't. Does it have to do with your social life? <coughs> Well, <laughs> I would say, yes, it's terribly social. Your secret, then, has something to do, your situation in life has something to do with your social life. Yes. I see you're married. Does it have anything to do with your marriage? Uh, 
Yes. It does. Is your wife uh, a professional person by any chance? Well, what do you mean by a professional person? Well, does his she... wife, is his wife in the entertainment business, or does she work? Is there anything that she does that I could go after? She does, oh, she, she does something. I would say entertainment field only very indirectly, wouldn't you? Right, definitely. Ah, oh. is she a model? No. She's not a model. There's $10 down and $70 to go, Mr. Henry Morgan, please. Uh, Mr. Schenck, you said uh, you, were in a, you were happily situated. Yes. And it has some relationship to your wife. Yes. Is she very rich? <laughs> Cynical question. <laughs> I don't see. What am I going to say? Is she a good cook? That's nothing. That won't be a secret. <laughs> she never sees it. Is, is it, is it uh, would it do us any good to find out what it is that your wife does actually? Has she a title? Uh, uh, yes. Oh. Is it uh, like... Um, in the, like, princess or, or something like that? I uh, mean, a royal no. title? Royal title? No. Uh, a, t a title like a Miss something? Like Miss America or Miss no. uh, Indonesia? No. No? Well, now Audrey knows. You see, the whole thing is going. Her name is Jane. Her sister's know. name is Audrey. It's $20 down I mean, and $60 Jane, right. to go. Miss Kitty I Carlisle. says it Miss something. Is he says this, no. Is this uh, in the sports field? And maybe it's Mrs. America. Is it Mrs. America? Yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> well, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Morgan is impetuous. I'm going to have to get one, two, three, four. We'll penalize four because it wasn't his turn around and she was going on sports. Jane guessed it anyway. But now, wait a minute. You haven't guessed it yet. You have to guess she is Mrs. America of when? Well, it must be very recent, this judging year? by Mr. Shank's looks. Is it this year? <laughs> well, this year we would have to say yes. I was hoping you would say 1952. The no, phraseology is, 19... is 1953. 1953. <laughs> and so you have won so far $60. Thanks so much from the makers of prom. And I wouldn't dare let Mr. Shank get away without having him bring on his luscious looking wife. Mr. Shank, have you seen Mrs. America? Evelyn Joyce Shank. <laughs> you husbands Bye, can just Mr. lie there and suffer. <laughs> and now it's time to have our panel go to work on tonight's special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Romeo of Cafe Society, Mr. Slapsy Maxie Rosenblum. <laughs> so nice to have you with us tonight. Have you seen our show before? Yes, I did. I want to tell you, Gary, you have one of the most charming panels I've ever seen. Well, good. You know these folks, do you? And their uh, women are not bad either. Yeah. <laughs> I know them all indirectly very, very well. The first one... Miss, Miss Carlyle. Miss Carlyle. Norwell. I saw her in a show a few years back, and believe it or not, she played a prince. Am I right? That's absolutely true. She played a How prince. did you remember? Well, it's because... I think at that time I was still boxing and I wasn't available, so I guess that's why she played this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the chap next to her... Henry Morgan? Uh, Henry Morgan. We have our hair done in the same place. <laughs> same barber, am I right? Yeah, you, you too. And Miss Meadows? Yeah. I haven't met her, but I met her charming sister in Chicago through a good friend, Phil Silvers. <laughs> you know, Henry's Audrey. better too. This fella... <laughs> The new column? Him, I don't know. He must be a preliminary fighter. <laughs> <laughs> he must be a late fight comer. Aside from that, you know them all very well, though. You I know, too. I saw you. I liked you very much. I saw you with Durante. Well, a good times. deal. <laughs> well. All right, panel, let's see how quickly now we can guess Maxie's secret. We'll play the game as before, except that, of course, any money that is won by Mr. Rosenblum will go to his favorite charity. Now, Maxie, you tell me your secret. The folks out there want to know what it is. <laughs> Crazy little mixed up kid. I'll tell you this. The clue is this is something that he is taking, panel. And we will start in this case with Mr. Henry Morgan, please. Uh, Mr. Rosenblum, old friend, is this something that you uh, are taking regularly? Uh, often, let's say. On and off, but uh, over a period of time. Yes, sir. Is this something that uh, uh, in taking of it, does it uh, cause you any pain? Yes. <laughs> so 
some slight pain, yes. But sometimes you enjoy pain. You mean this is... Well, and it's something like injections or something like that? <laughs> no. Is this something that over a period of time you've taken and this time extended back to uh, the time when you were boxing? Uh, you, you never took this when you were boxing, did you? I, uh, I'd rather, but I didn't. <laughs> is this something that you take alone? Alone? Does somebody help you take it, or do you, uh, or... Well, I have help. <laughs> Does the person who, the person who helps you, is it a specialist? <laughs> yes, of I... some kind. I gather so. <laughs> Now, is this one of those things where you lie down and talk about your dreams to somebody? <laughs> In other words, a scene from my last fight. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars down and $70 to go, Miss Kitty Carlisle, please. Does this thing that you're taking, Maxie, does this involve a mental effort? Uh, I don't think so. Some mental effort. Well, if I take it, how could it be mental? <laughs> I think you're very smart if you saw me as a prince and remembered. Well, I've admired you very much. <laughs> is this is sort of half mental, half physical? Do okay. you use your body in this effort? Yes, ma'am. From the waist up? Partly. Uh, your hand? Partly. From the waist down? <laughs> from the waist down? It involves your whole body, in other words. It involves the entire body. And is this some kind of lessons that you're taking? Yes. It's not something like diction lessons or singing lessons. Why would he have to take diction lessons? That's ridiculous. I took it for six years. <laughs> you think I'm bad you now? You don't need to make me think I've made a phone call. <laughs> well, I do take diction lessons, but this is not it. Maybe singing lessons. Come on. There's $20 down and $60 to go, Mr. Bill Cullen. Maxie, this thing that you're doing is a sort of a... Uh, almost indirect continuation of your ring career. I mean, are you taking ballet lessons by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. I want to know something. How did you ever get from boxing to ballet? We thought it would be the most impossible no. thing in the world. Did you ever see Maxie fight? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have taken ballet lessons because... I have a new act I'm getting out now, you see, and <laughs> it requires ballet dancing, and so I take ballet lessons twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't giggle, the man's serious. He takes ballet lessons ballet twice a week. Would you demonstrate? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting contract. Max, let me <laughs> ask you, what are your future plans, my friend? Well, Gary, I'm, uh, I can't make up my mind whether to do a disc jockey show in Chicago what station? Can I mention w WGN? Sure. My good station, 38 states. And, uh, or, or make a comeback and challenge this Rocky Marciano. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Oh, you're, you're, well, I, not to be insulting, but as long as you've been out of the business, he could knock you out over the telephone. Oh, no, he's going to challenge uh, him to ballet, I think. <laughs> what? <laughs> What'd no, you say? I say, isn't that the expression they use? They say he could knock you out over the telephone? Not long distance. <laughs> Slapsy, so you didn't win much, but it's been great fun having you with us. Prom and I both thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right home. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
And uh, let me see what I did when I was a kid. Maybe I'll get to you there. Uh, did you set fire to something? No. Did you set fire to someone? No. Did you break something? No. Did you break someone? No. Are you here tonight? Yes. I want to hear one yes. Uh, did, you, did you cook something? One? You know, hoist. Did you swipe Steel. at something? Steel. Swipe. That's no. it. Steal. You didn't steal anything? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you stole the Andrew sisters. <laughs> This uh, thing that, did, did you take something and... I think work? steel is rather a harsh, harsh word. Your son hides, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got the secret. Right. I got to say, right before he came on the show, he took snuff. <laughs> <laughs> did you take something and hide it from somebody? Yes. Was it your daddy's paycheck? No. Was it your mommy's paycheck? No. <laughs> it sounds like you had a very interesting childhood, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars down, seventy dollars to go, Miss Jane Meadows. Matthew, this thing that you hid, was it small enough for you to hold in your hand? Yes. Was it something that you shouldn't have opened until Christmas? <laughs> no? Was this thing that you hid, was it, is it uh, made mostly for children to play with or use? <laughs> no? Is it something that you'd like to have when you grow up? <laughs> no? His answer was no. No. Is this something by any chance that most people wouldn't like to have around the house? No. No? This is a, a yes, it isn't something that you would not <laughs> like to have around the house. This is something that he wouldn't like to have around the house, or most people wouldn't? Most people would prefer not to have them around the house. I see. Oh, them. Are they by any chance things that nibble on cheese? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Matthew, he didn't catch one and hide it somewhere, did he? <laughs> did you? No, no, he didn't catch one. There's $20 down and $60 to go, Mr. Henry Morgan, please. Well, we were, we were telling jokes here, but uh, were we up to uh, where... What did they say about the cheese, yes? Yes. Yes. Something that nibbles on cheese. She well, wanted to know if they nibble on cheese. Well, I mean, Matthew, you, you keep a couple of uh, mice, don't you, or something like that? No. <laughs> this is something small enough to hold in your hand? Yes. And they nibble on cheese. <laughs> <laughs> These are animals, are they? No. <laughs> Matthew, you know what happens to little boys who lie, don't you? He, are these, he is being as truthful as he could possibly be. <laughs> are these uh, insects? No. Are they living? No. You got I'm some little sorry, dead things that Henry. eat cheese? <laughs> Henry and friends, we're going to have to forfeit the entire $80 to young Matthew because our time is up. Will you tell the panel what you did? I hid my grandma's teeth in my toy chest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. You're going home for me. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. We hate to let him go, but he has to go home and get a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for our guests and their secrets tonight. In just a moment, I will tell you about the famous celebrity who is going to be third degree by our panel on next. Now, next week at the same time, my friends, our panel are going to do their best to discover the secret which is being kept by Mr. Basil Rathbone. And also next week, we will present the national winner of our I've Got a Secret contest. And there will be other interesting people to challenge our panel with their secrets, too. Until that time, may I say goodnight to our panel, Mr. Bill Cullen, Miss Jane Meadows, Mr. Henry Morgan, and Miss Kitty Carlisle. Until we may all meet here next week, then, this will be Gary Moore saying bye-bye for the whole bunch of us. Be very kind to of each other, will you? Goodbye out there.